we bring this meeting to order. A little housekeeping, this is a little new for us. If you wanna speak, you're able to push and raise your hand over on the right hand side. If you bring up all of the colors, if you're on a phone, you hit star nine and it will raise a hand and then you can be recognized. Are there any uh, changes or additions to the agenda as presented? I, I do actually have one thing that I, I got this afternoon uh, that we have the uh, agreement with the solid waste transfer district that we sent them. Uh, they signed it and sent it back to us. Okay. Uh, so we need to, we sent it to them as a proposal and they accepted it without changes and went ahead and signed it. So uh, we'll need to sign our copy. Okay. Any other changes or additions? Hearing none. Okay. Let's uh, close the select board meeting and open up the dog hearing. We've all got the report. I guess we'll uh, show that is uh, uh, submitted as evidence. It came from uh, the, the hospital, I believe. Yeah, Copley. Uh, we have a victim, Tammy Murray, and the dog is owned by Jim Armstrong. We've got, we've, we had pictures, we had test, uh, written testimony, as well as supporting documents. And I would enter those supporting documents at, as exhibit, like exhibit A would be the one from the hospital. Exhibit B would be the one from Tammy. And exhibit C. Okay, that's your, your report of hers? Yeah, the written report is Tracy. Excuse me then. Exhibit B would be from Tracy. Exhibit C would be the letter from Lindsay, as well as exhibit D is in dog, the letter from Liz. Okay. Yep. And we'll be running this in a quasi judicial format. And as of this time, Tammy is not online. Tracy, you are. So I would ask you that you raise your right hand, please, and let me know when it's raised. Yep. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, not but the truth, as long as you as <laughs> yeah. So help you God. God. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Uh, okay, would you like to give us a report there, Tracy? On just this incident. Um this is an ongoing problem. I believe it's the same dog that's done this before. Um, Tammy's afraid to walk down the street now, as is the neighbor that submitted her statement. Um, the owner, the, the girlfriend or wife of Jim Armstrong couldn't even get the dog under control. Um, once she did, she got it in the house and she made the statement that they were going to put it down. I have tried unsuccessfully numerous times to reach Mr. Armstrong. I've been to his house over a dozen times, um, to deal with this situation. He either refuses to answer the door or is not home. Okay. And the dog you do know from other uh, prior incidences? I, I do believe it is the same dog and okay. I don't even like dealing with that dog. And he's a dangerous dog. Were the rabies up to date? Uh, according to the town records, yes. But again, I haven't been able to talk to him directly. Okay, so you are not aware if the dog has been under the required observation? I can't reach him. Okay. I've been to his house, I banged on his door, I tried the phone number I had, um, we even had the sheriffs. I mean, nobody can seem to get in touch with the guy. 
Okay, uh, opening it up to other board members. Do you have questions of Tracy? Is this yes. dog licensed? Yes, last year he was. And what is it? Is this the, can you identify it? Is it the German Shepherd? Yeah, um, from what I'm understanding, yes. That's uh, kind of what Tammy was saying, but she's unsure. She was just scared to death. <laughs> but that's the only large dog that I know they have. I know they have smaller ones, but. Do you know the dog's like, name? Oh. Uh, not off the top of my head. It, one of the documents says Asia. Yes, that's right. Yeah. yeah, that sounds right. Okay. But that document said they think it's Asia. Okay. Yeah. It sounds right. It sounds like that's the dog. I'd have to look at my dog list. You that's, mentioned that's the only dog that he owns that fits the description. Uh, even if the, it's a little bit roughly fits the description. Um, Correct. And it's registered to him? Who's it registered to? I believe it is him. I believe it's him. He came in to do the, the license. And he got ticketed last year for letting this dog run. So this isn't the first time. I physically saw the dog running myself. Yeah, you've you've mentioned that the dog is that this is an ongoing problem. Can you describe the the your your history with with this dog? They hardly ever that I've seen have it locked up, um, and it has bitten once before. I mean, every time I've drive down that road, well, not every time, but numerous times I've driven down that road, and that dog's been running. But this isn't the same dog that we had a hearing about a year or so ago. No. For Mr. Armstrong? Yeah, there was another dog. I think his name was Chevy, actually. That was a different dog owner. Okay, same yeah. room. Yeah, same area. And the last time it bit somebody, was it uh, was it this bad? Do you remember, Tracy, what the condition of the person was? I don't think it was as bad as this one. This one was pretty good, pretty significant. Yeah, and, yeah the pictures were pretty Yeah, she's rough. had multiple doctor's visits and whatnot to deal with it. Okay. I don't believe that we've had a complaint filed about this dog before. Just the unless, running at large. Yeah. Unless we have any further questions for Tracy, I see Tammy is now on. We should probably open up her mic. Okay, I see her. Tammy, I'm uh, unmuting you. Okay, Tammy, can you hear me? Yes. We have already started the hearing on the dog. We've heard testimony from Tracy. We have the evidence from the hospital. We have Tracy's report. We have a couple of supporting documents. At this point, it, it is run as a quasi judicial, meaning we will take testimony. We will take uh, evidence if you have to submit it. And uh, we will, you can have witnesses as well. Do you have any witnesses? that would be willing or are planning to testify besides yourself? Not the time, no. Would you uh, please raise your right hand? Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God? Yes. Okay. Uh, like I said, we've heard Tracy's testimony and we've got the supporting documents. This would be an opportunity for you to provide testimony, and then I will open it up for board members to ask you questions. Okay. So go ahead. Just tell you what happened? Yes. Yeah. I was taking a walk down the road, 
the dog wasn't out when I went down through. I, I walked down to the dead end sign and I turned around and it was coming up through and I was just walking along and the dog started barking and I could hear it running down the driveway, barking. And it was on me so fast. I, it happened before I even knew it. It bit back on my leg and I just stopped and I put my hands up because I was afraid he was going to attack again. And I just started screaming for someone. And the lady, I guess, I guess her name is Tracy. I don't know. She came down anyways with a stick and tried to get the dog away from me. And because the, the dog was circling me and barking and growling and I was scared. I didn't dare to move. Kayla, a neighbor up the road, happened to be coming along and I waved her down and I asked her to give me a ride because I was bleeding and I was hurting and, and I was afraid of that dog. And she got the dog, the lady, the, the owner, got the dog to the other side of the car and I jumped in the back seat. Kayla drove me home, dropped me off at my house. I pulled up my pant leg and I showed the lady, Tracy, I guess her name is, I showed her that the dog bit me and she could see the blood on my back on my leg, on the back of my pants. And I I pulled up my pant leg and Tracy, I mean, excuse me, Kayla took the picture of the back of my leg. That's the one you see. Yep. And the other one is a picture I took a week after. And my leg is still swollen in black and blue. And, and uh, the, what gets me is I saw, I read the other two reports that the people wrote, the other two. And why didn't these people have a beware the dog sign out there or anything like that? I mean, I took walks last year and that dog, I never saw that dog, but this year he was, he was right there. And it's like, I'm now I don't dare to go for a walk. Nobody up here dares to go for a walk. Everybody's Can you afraid of that dog. A description of the dog? What he it looks was, like? He was, he, he, supposedly he's a German shepherd, but I think he's got to be a mix because he's black and white. He doesn't really, I've seen German, purebred German shepherds and this dog isn't quite, he's not purebred as far as I could tell. But he's a good sized dog. I mean, they have two dogs. They have a small one and then they have that big one. Okay. Black and he has some weight on him and mm. they, she called him Asia. Asia. Her, Asia. Okay. And she told me, she said, um, I said, your dog bit me. She goes, he bit you? She says, well, you don't have to worry about it because this time he's going to be put down. Okay, thank you. I will now open it up to any board members want to ask questions. Any board members want to ask Tammy any questions? Um, I do. Hi, Tammy, this is Kyle Noose. Um, I was just... You mentioned that last year you didn't see this dog. So this is the first time this dog has, that you've witnessed has run out into the road or. Yeah, I stopped I stopped up there one year, one day last year and they had him, I, they were having a yard sale up there and I stopped and the dog, I could hear the dog barking. He was, but he was in like a pen or something. He was up and back. I couldn't see him. He wasn't right down there where I could really see him. Mm -hmm. But this is, I mean, he's chased the cars before, but I've never seen him while I'm on my walks. Never, He's, he's chased the cows, you know, when you go up and down the road, he'll chase your car. A neighbor stopped the other day and told me that they had a hard time getting up the road because the dog was in the road, circling the car, and they wouldn't get away from the car. But all the neighbors up here are afraid to go for a walk down there. You know, Thank they, you. They, yeah. they all up there have kids, you know? It's like, what if I had my grandchild with me? If that dog did that much damage to me, how much would he have done to a little child? They can really. Doug? Me. Hi. This is Doug Moldy. I'm wondering when you said that the the lady there where who lives where the dog is saw your leg, when did when did she examine it? It sounded like after you were taken home. Did she see it? No, no. And right right there, when she came down, she was standing next to me trying to get the dog away from me. And she had her arm around me. She said, just stay right next to me. And she was trying to get the dog away. And I said, your dog bit me. She said, she bit you. And I, I showed her that, you know, because the back of my leg was all blood, you know. Mm -hmm. I can't recall if I pulled my pant leg up at that moment or not. But, I mean, she could see the blood. She had to have seen the blood. It was, the my whole back of my leg was all blood. I have bad veins in my legs. It doesn't, and I bleed really bad. Thank you. Tammy. Yes. Mike Dunham here. I saw that bite, and I tell you, that's uh, one of the worst bites I've seen in what a while. And uh, you're very lucky that dog didn't knock you down or something and 
bite you on the neck because that kind of a bite, if it had been in your neck, that could have been fatal. So that is a vicious dog. There's no question yeah. about it. Because I have those varicose veins on the back of my legs. And it's like, he, if he cut one of them, you know, we got down to the doctors and she cleaned it out. And that one, one of the bites just kept on on squirting blood. Yeah. I was scared. I, I didn't dare to move. If that girl hadn't come along, I don't know what, if they, those people hadn't been home, what would I have done? I didn't have my cell phone with I know. me. Okay. Do we have any other questions of Tammy or Tracy? If not, uh, Tammy, the way this will work is we will close the dog hearing. We will continue on with the rest of our select board meeting. And then at the end of the night, we will go into deliberations and uh, decide the fate of Mr. Armstrong's dog. Okay. So unless anybody's got any further questions. Thanks for uh, coming in, zooming thank in. You. Thank, yes, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Having a good night now. Stay yep, safe. Thank you. You, too. you too. Thank you. Thank you. I'll end the dog hearing and now we'll go into the regular agenda. The first item is. Uh, we do have someone raising their hand. Oh. Uh, but I don't see them as part of this hearing. It okay. says Mandy. Yeah. Was that a witness? Mandy, are you a witness or do you have supporting documentation for, for what testimony has been provided? I, I'm going to say we're not going to recognize these because we are taking testimony only from the known facts of the owner of the dog, the one that was bit, or the uh, constable. Okay, let's move on to review meeting minutes. Is the board prepared to approve them for March 17th and March 23rd? Move to approve. We've got a motion to approve. Do we have a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Rosemary, do you have a report for tonight? Hold on, I gotta unmute Rosemary. Okay, there you go, Rosemary. Okay, I sent out an email to all the board members and Brian for the uh, warrant and the um, edit listing. And the total amount was $53,140.18. Yeah. Uh, um, if you got one to assign one person to sign the warrant. A question, what was the excavator used for that was rented from Farm and Garden? Uh, I'm not sure, you'd have to ask Brian Krause. He had it for several days. Okay, so it must have been some project. It was road working project? at it wore a road project in December. Okay, that wouldn't have been on the rail trail. No, we weren't doing that work, were we? Okay, never mind. I'll ask Brian. Any questions for Rosemary? Okay, now you need a board to authorize a member to sign. I, yeah. Okay. I move the chairman does. Got a motion to authorize the chair to sign the orders on behalf of the board. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? You good with that, Eric? Yeah, I'm fine with it. Okay. My question on this is this a matter that we have to have a separate uh, and warned article on? Um, you may want to unmute Rosemary. Or she is, isn't she? Uh, this is uh, allowable, isn't it? As I recall, Rosemary? Yes, it is. Yeah. Even under the circumstances, Doug, I doubt if anybody throws in jail. <laughs> Any other discussion? All those in favor of seeing five is saying aye. 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 Those opposed? So I'll come in 
tomorrow or something and sign that. Okay, I should be in the office tomorrow. Okay. Uh, Brian, I guess we go into your report. All right. So we've got two sealed bids have come in on the uh, mobile home. Uh, the first is from Daniel Cutting. And he has offered to $4,000 for uh, the, was that 53 Katie Wynn? 4,000 even? Yep. Okay. That name again, Brian? Daniel Cutting. Daniel, if you're here listening, well, I don't think there's anything for you to, any input to offer right now, but let me check our second bid from Daryl Mansfield. That was close. The, the second bid from Daryl Mansfield is for $3,100. Okay, and they both understand it's as is. Yes. Okay. What's the board's pleasure? I move we sell it to Daniel Cutting for four thousand dollars. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? Do you want to put a time limit on that? That you know. We do have a, a second bidder here that we would have cash in hand in so many days. The paperwork said two days, right? Give me a moment to check. Well, he's checking that uh, question. Um, so that include that four thousand dollars. That's going to cover the lot fees and the back taxes and everything. That's not. There's nothing in addition to the four thousand, right? They're not giving us anything in addition to the four thousand. Whatever is in excess of what we're owed, uh, and I don't think there's going to be much, if anything, that's in excess of what we're owed. Uh, that would be between the new owner and the lot uh, and the previous owner uh let's yeah. see the yeah, closing is take, you're, you're right mike it's a closing is to take place within 48 hours okay as i understand if there's any excess money it goes back to the previous owner the town doesn't make a profit yeah that, that's definitely true okay any other discussion uh, no, I don't think so. We own that property now. That is our property, free and clear. We don't have to pay back any money to anybody. That's yeah. all been decided already. Yeah. What's above and beyond what's owed on taxes, if we made more than that, I believe we have to return the excess to the... We're no different than anybody else there. If you bought a piece of property at tax sale, they did not redeem it. You own it. You don't have to give them back any money. You don't as a personal investor, but we do as a town. I, and correct me if You're I'm wrong. You're absolutely positive. Well, correct me if I'm wrong, Rosemary or, or Brian. I don't think that you're wrong. I, I think that you're correct in that. Um, uh, in this case, since there's some money that the lot owner wants. Uh, I don't think we're making a profit here. We're losing yeah. money, actually. Of course we yeah. are. Yeah. So I just wanted to establish we don't really need to pay back anything. We, we need to tighten this up, I said, for the next one we take. Yeah. Well, we don't know. Well, this is the first time we we've ever done this. We need to in a row the next time around. I know. Yeah. But we're going to tighten it up for the next one. Well, the next one, you and I won't be alive. 
Okay. <laughs> All those in favor of Daniel Cutting's bid of $4,000 signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Congratulations, Daniel. I see you're on. You own a trailer now. Or will soon. Or will soon. Within 48 hours. Uh, meeting options for the town volunteer groups. This was something I asked to be put on the agenda. It, the order that the select board laid out was suspending all commissions, boards, committees, meetings in light of the technology we have available and where meetings can now happen and not in person, I would look for the board to maybe uh, modify our order to allow meetings if they're done via uh, media methods or uh, not in person. So I guess I'd be looking for a, a motion from the select board to modify our prior order. So I would move that we allow um, our volunteer groups meetings to resume, um, provided um, the rules of social distancing are, are um, uh, followed and they're done on, should I say on Zoom or? Uh, or any but, sort of like, yeah, any sort of media method you don't have online. to identify are done online and comply with the open meeting law. Yep. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second, second. that. Okay, and Brian, you might want to unlock Donna in case she ever has any questions of our motions or actions. Is there any discussion on that? Let me get Donna. Uh, we do have someone with a hand raised. Okay, the person with the iPad. Go ahead. Uh, Charlie Gallanter. Hey, Charlie. So my understanding of the open meeting law, if it's done electronically, we still have to have a site where the public can come. Is that correct, Brian? That hasn't been changed by the legislature. Has it? it has been changed by the legislature as of last week. Uh, there is now a provision for remote meetings, and I will send out a guide on what are, the procedures will have to be for all of the boards. I would suggest that you wait until you've seen that procedure guide, select board, before you change oh, We've it. already seen it. Uh, it is in the board packet. Basically, there's quite a few exceptions during the uh, COVID-19 time frame. Uh, they're making quite a bit of uh, exceptions to the open meeting law that would allow us to be able to have meetings via uh, media, social media type of uh, formats. But we, we, can, we will provide that to all the boards, committees, commissions. I'm looking at the, to... go ahead, Doug. I'm looking at the instructions. They say Act Number 92 temporarily waives the physical location requirement throughout the duration of the governor's declared state of emergency. Yeah. Any other discussion? Um, no. Sorry, I just have one question. What about um? minutes and things like that uh, you are required to both take minutes and record the meeting we are but i'm not sure all committees are are they there was it, some exception there it is the difference between a legislative body so i think that would include the planning commission the planning commission i think it would include the library mm -hmm. Uh, but it wouldn't necessarily include all other bodies. I'm not sure where conservation and some of the others that are recognized would fall. But uh, it is definitely select board and planning commission uh, have to both record their meetings 
make the recordings available and take minutes. Okay. Uh, other bodies that are allowed to meet uh, can meet remotely as long as that it, it's open, something like Zoom where you can call in by phone or connect by computer uh, is, a, is a necessary feature. And then um, the, excuse me, the recording is only required for legislative bodies. So anybody can meet remotely, but, and everybody has to take minutes still, but only legislative bodies have the dual requirement of a recording and minutes. Okay. Any other discussion? Uh, Charlie, you got your hand up again? I do. Yes, go me? ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, warning, how do we warn these meetings? Do we still post them in two places, the post office and the town hall? Yes, they are warned the same. Um, the only real change other than, or the, the, the kind of other big change to these is the, we now have 10 days to post meeting minutes instead of five days. Uh, but I don't think that's really going to affect us. Um, but warnings remain the same. Thank you. Is there a downside to asking folks to um, record their meetings? I don't think so. Uh, we have, at this time, we have plenty of space on our website for posting things, especially if we record them and save them to YouTube or something like that, where we're not, you know, we don't want to get in the business of hosting a bunch of big video files, but. Who seconded my motion? I did. Uh, Doug did. And Kyle followed. <laughs> <laughs> Double second. Would you accept a, a change to the motion that we asked them to record the meetings, Smith and O'Brien? No, that'd be fine. Okay. okay, friendly amendment, friendly amendment accepted. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those, those opposed? Uh, next item is handling late tax penalties. And uh, there's a few scenarios that Brian and Rosemary are going to present to us. Hey, Go ahead. Yes. We seem to have lost a member. Who have we lost? Uh, I don't see Michael on here anymore. Okay. He, he was having problems with his internet. Okay, <laughs> we'll just hold, hold for a minute, see if he comes back. All right, I gave Mike, Mike has my cell phone number and he was gonna call if he had severe problems uh, reconnecting, but... Um, also in this, besides the late tax penalties, um, I think we might devote a couple minutes of discussion to uh, the reappraisal. Uh, so I've gotten a little bit of feedback on that. Okay. Let's wait a few minutes, see if Mike yeah. can get reestablished. I see Lisa on. Do you have anything you wanted to add tonight, Lisa, or are you just uh, listening in? Uh, I am unmuting you, Lisa. There you go. Thank you. No, I wanted just to know if I could hold my rec meetings. So I was Should listening be all for set. that. Thank you. Okay. Uh, looks like we got Mike back. Mike, yeah. can hear us. Okay. Go ahead, Brian. All right, so uh, the first is uh, specifically about late tax penalties. Um, kind of outline three, what I'd say viable options, uh, except the first option is really not preferred. So let, we'll, we'll start there. Um, the board has expressed a general interest in providing some relief for uh, folks that are experiencing some financial hardship due to the COVID-19. So our issue with doing that is that because the voters set the tax due date and the late penalty, the board doesn't really have the authority to 
directly influence uh, that, that date because again, it was given to us by the voters. So we have a couple options. One would be to hold a townwide vote. Um, in that same act that modified the uh, modified the requirements for open meetings, they also made a modification to Australian ballot. And we would be able to vote, hold a townwide vote by Australian ballot uh, for the, um, excuse me, for the, the tax due date. So we could change the tax due date or change the penalties by a townwide vote. Um, it's pretty good in the sense that it's, everybody knows what's on the table, what they're deciding. We could, you know, people would actually vote on it and decide it. Um, the cons to this are, it would be expensive. We'd have to mail ballots to everybody. And then we would be increasing the level of exposure for a lot of our JPs when we have to count the ballots. Uh, they'd be exposed to each other. They'd be exposed to any contamination that remained on the ballots. Um, so this is not, I would not call this a very desirable method for providing relief for tax penalties, but it is one method. Uh, the next one is the, the, we dealt with this last year or the year before when we didn't get the school tax rate in uh, at the beginning of the year and we had to send out our uh, tax bills late. And we learned at that time that there's a secondary requirement that we cannot charge a late penalty earlier than 30 days after a tax bill has been sent out. And there's no penalty for sending a tax bill out late. So if the select board and Rosemary work together and just decided to send out tax bills later, then they wouldn't be due until 30 days after we sent the, the tax bill out. So the pros for this is that it's easy to control. It's just whatever day we set. Uh, and the late penalties will be pretty easy to understand because it'll be 30 days after we send it out. So we'll have a definite day that tax penalties are now effective on. Um, the cons, this might not sit right with everybody, that it's a little bit of a quirk of the law that we're using. It's 100% legal. There's no penalties associated, but it's a little odd. Um, so our third option is we could keep the due date and hear abatement requests. And we can recognize, you know, you can set one of the, the criteria is financial hardship. We can recognize uh, financial hardship caused by COVID-19 has a sharp and significant penalty and you know, assess, uh, uh, choose to abate penalties related from this fourth payment um, on a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, the pros for that are that it's, it, it's another one that's pretty easy to understand. Um, we're using existing procedures and laws for managing uh, late penalties. Um, it also provides income uh, for folks that can pay on time. It encourages them to pay on time. Uh, and that has the key downside of we might have to hear a lot of these. There could be a, quite a few abatement requests, uh, in which case we would have to, we can meet remotely now, but it would still be a lot of meetings. So, I got a question, option two, delay sending out the tax bill. Haven't our tax bills already been sent out? It's just one bill with four payments? I'm unmuting Rosemary here. Yes, we've okay. sent the tax bill, but we haven't sent a delinquent notice to the taxpayer after the fourth installment. That's what I believe what Brian's talking about. 
Okay, so there would be no interest or penalty uh, put on the May 10th due date until after you've sent out a tax bill? Yes. Yes. Okay, and that wouldn't take effect until 30 days after you send it out? Right. Okay. Um, Brian and Rosemary, when, so the latest that we can collect these taxes is June 3rd, like we have to collect before our fiscal year ends? Well, if we didn't collect before the end of the fiscal year, uh, they would go into, you know, delinquent taxes. We'd be owed these taxes into the next fiscal year. So we might end up closing with a deficit on one year, the current year, mm -hmm. but then theoretically next year, our income should be increased by a significant amount because we, we get the taxes in at that time. So what, Rosemary, what can we afford to do? I mean, can we, can we, uh, afford to not have a lot of people pay? I mean, like what's, what's our bottom line? You know, it's hard to know because we don't know if it's the same people that's going to be over and over from the past years or if it's going to be new people. Mm -hmm. Of course, we have all those bills due the first quarter in July too, you know, like the sheriff's department and the ambulance services, county taxes, which, which is a pretty good sum of money. Right. Do you have a preference, Rosemary? Either two or three. That's my preference also for what it matters. Okay. I don't have a strong opinion on one or the other, but I do have a strong opinion of not one. Yeah, definitely right. not number one. Okay. So I really don't like the idea of the abatement requests, not so much because of the burden it puts on the select board, but because people are dealing with enough right now. Yeah. They, and they don't want to have to deal with this whole new thing that they probably haven't been through before. And they've got to now worry about abating their taxes and, it's a pain in the neck for them. I agree. I agree, Nat. I think, you know, if we're trying to actually give, uh, do a service for people, <laughs> let's not then make them go through the hassle of having to abate and go through that sort of, also, it's somewhat humiliating, you know, like, it's, yes. it just does not feel good. I have a, I think it's, uh, I'm strongly in favor of, version two, and, and the reason being that is that three, uh, three will be unable to discriminate between people who wouldn't have paid their taxes and th those that the pandemic is, is affecting. And so we will not be able to, we'll have a whole years of, of delinquent taxes, whereas the other allows us, two allows us to control when we, to, to create a, to grant a grace period and then call Things do. Yeah. I mean, I, I've been thinking about number two all afternoon, actually, because I really hate the idea of sort of subverting the intent and will of the voters at, at town meeting. Um, so I, I don't take this lightly at all, but I, I think it's the best of bad options. I think it should be publicized that the, the town has a need to meet its, its requirements its obligations that people who can pay should pay and that we need to help those who, who can't pay and that we will be able to we'll be calling things due and then the, the penalties will kick in. Good. And, yeah. and those penalties would kick in 30 days after Rosemary sends out the bills. So I guess at some future time we would have to decide okay, pull the trigger, now's the time to send the bills out. But, but that's something we can decide, you know, after May 10th. And the bills are actually a notice of delinquency, as I understood from Rosemary. Right. Yeah. 
Okay. So for tonight, is it the board's desire to take no action and we will come back to this when we working with Rosemary thinks the best time is to send the bills out? Yes. Yeah, don't that sounds good. Don't you think we should in, give some indication to the to the taxpayers what we're going to do so they can plan? You know, it may be food on the table for some people. But I'm not sure if, if we're prepared to make that call tonight because we don't know how long we're going to be in this situation. We might wait until June to send the, you know, the delinquent tax bill out. Well, it's kind of a mathematical question, isn't it? I mean, it's when, <laughs> when we need money. Yeah. So we can figure that out kind of in the next week, couldn't we? Well, it sounds like Rosemary knows that we have big bills coming in July that need to be paid, right? Yes. Unless borrowing is an option. That is an option. Which we may have to do this year anyhow. Can we can we make it public that we're exploring the option of, of delaying sending out notice of delinquencies, which would have this the effect that we've talked about, and then we could visit it, visit it, uh, revisit it next on the, the third Monday or or the first of May, the first week should, in May. Should we hold off making that public until after the May tenth uh, fourth payment has occurred? I don't think that's fair to the people that are going to feel really scrambling to make the the May tenth payment. I mean, it's good for us, but I don't think it's fair disclosure. But yeah, I agree. The, the taxpayers who haven't paid any taxes yet, and they are quite often repeat offenders, uh, you know, for whatever reasons, we are rewarding them as well. I think that's the risk that we have to, I think that the, the, um, you know, I, I think most people will not take advantage of us. <laughs> I just believe that in this situation. I, I kind of tend to think that the repeat offenders are people that are kind of on the edge financially anyway, and, and they might need the relief as much as anyone. Um, so in, in addition to what Kyle said, I agree with. So we're, we're balancing one on one side the uh, you know doing what's right and good for the people with we have the bills to pay coming up on July 1st do we want to set that date tonight I think we need a plan I mean if if Brian and Rosemary can kind of do come up with a couple of different scenarios of what would it be if we delayed this until I don't know the end of August, what would this be? What would our plan be if we, would we have to borrow money? Um, what if, so, or, or is it better to do that at the end of July? Um, so in two weeks is our regular meeting. Would you guys be prepared to come back with a suggestion then? And I'm talking to Brian and Rosemary. Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, I think so too also. Okay. Just to, with the goal, the goal being to delay it as as much as we can without doing anything um, fiscally irresponsible. And I think I've heard from the board a consensus on option two. There was nobody who spoke in favor of option one or three. Yeah, yeah. That's 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 for me too. Uh, before we go, before we go off this. I'm going to recognize Charlie. He's got his hand up. Okay, go ahead, Charlie. Uh, he's still muted. Mike. He's still muted. Okay, there he goes. Okay, go so ahead. I'm looking at my I'm looking at my property tax bill for 2019-2020. I assume that's what we're discussing. Yes. It's dated July 10th, 2019. <clears throat> yes. So they've already gone out. Yes. So
So how can you have a new date? It's the last payment due date on May 10th. That's when all of the penalties and the interest kick in. And yes, what, I understand. Okay. I understand, and what, that. I understand that. But you're Rosemary's, saying that Rosemary sends out a uh, a bill when when they become delinquent. Okay, I understand. I think. Okay. I just had one other thought. So, let's say we do delay it to July or August, but then August is when the first twenty twenty payment yes. is due. So would that mean people would have two? <laughs> um, yep. Yeah. Yeah. At some I point, think, we can't go, we can't just forgive all of these payments. No, no. Um, so at some point, uh, we're going to have to catch back up with this year's taxes and next year's taxes. Um, my advice would be to delay this rather than trying to delay this as much as possible to err on the side of delaying it as little as possible so that we don't, uh, we, we kind of minimize that impact of uh, multiple bills coming due all at once. Yeah, I would hate to set people up for also further failure, you, you know, like just, yeah, uh, cascading of, failures of next year's taxes and yeah, you know everything else. I, I'm concerned about that. So I, I, I see Rosemary keeps trying to come in. Sorry, I think it's highly unlikely that the tax bills are going to go out in July because the homestead declaration <laughs> have been um, delayed until July fifteenth. Wow. That's right. So our, our automatic cycle is going to be off by some amount, depending on the state. Probably um, at least a month. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that the legislature and what money it has and what it appropriates for us, for our, for our different state funding sources, that might be important for us to know, to gather. The time might be, period might be important for us to gather information to make, uh, to, to decide what this should be. Also, also the uh, when people are likely to return to employment, any any you know that is uh, that is the real grace in this is when people can come back to work. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll look for a recommendation from Rosemary and Brian in two weeks. Mike, I see you joined us again. Uh, Basically, by consensus, all the board members were in agreement on option two. No one expressed really an interest in option one or three. We were just going back and forth on what date we would use as, as the date for the check, the uh, bill to be sent out. I don't think Mike has finished connecting. <laughs> okay. And I just spoke to myself, I guess. <laughs> I move that we put Mike on the broadband committee. <laughs> <laughs> More proof. He's, oh my God. He's got a real bad connection tonight. Yeah. If anything, uh, what I forwarded out today, this is really highlighting uh, internet accessibility for the, the whole state, uh, what we're going through right now. So who knows? Maybe there'll be some good out of this coming. Ryan, if you unmute iPhone, that's the second mic. That's also Mike. Okay. Yeah, so unmute him. That's me. I'm on an iPhone now. <laughs> oh, yeah, we see two oh. of you. You still only get one vote. Now let me get out of the other one. <laughs> only got one now, right? Yeah. <laughs> There we Did go. You, oh. All right. We just lost him. You should be able to hear me now. Oh my God. <laughs> He's got the whiskey. <laughs> <laughs>
Mike, did you catch any of what we were talking did about? You hear my phone? <laughs> huh? Can you hear me at all? It's really echoing back. <laughs> really? Uh, okay, now we can see you. Let me uh, get right out of the hole. That other computer at all. Did, yeah, we'll did, you catch, did you catch any of our conversation? A little bit. Okay. Basically, the whole board was by consent for option number two, delaying sending out the tax bill. No one who spoke strong in favor of option one or three. Our decision point is just when do we want the tax bill to be sent out? We can't be too late, but yet we want to wait long enough. So we, we're going to ask Brian and Rosemary to come back in two weeks when we have our regular meeting and have a recommended a recommendation. Sounds good to me. Okay. Okay. If everyone's Content with that, let's move on to the next item. Revolving, or did you want to also talk about something else with this one? Uh, with the uh, reappraisal. Um, yes. You know, that we had some questions about this and I think it's a little related. Um, you know, I, I, I wanted to, I know Doug has really taken the lead on this, but I, I kind of wanted to get the board's temperature on um, what your level of interest was in uh, delaying reappraisal. Doug, you wanna to speak to this? Okay, um, I had uh, gotten a hold of Karen Horn and she sent me on to Jill, Jill Remick, who is the head of property valuation and review. And uh, I wrote her a letter that indicated, that set out the procedural posture that Johnson is in with the quadrennial reappraisal and that we, we undoubtedly uh, would have issues. We would need to, there would be downsides such as uh, with our assessors and, and delay, you know, our contract there, delay, you know, what's the relationship between, if we delay between how, how good would our reappraisal be? Um, Jill Remick sent me a letter that said to, uh, get to the heart of the matter. It's her recommendation. We complete our reappraisal and publish a revised grand list this spring as planned. And she sent me, uh, she recommended that we review the information on uh, on hearings. I did I did review the hearings and basically they they allow us to, to have the, the grievance hearings. They're supposed to be they set for one day, but you can continue them. They, we can do them remotely just like this. But the real problem that I see in this is, uh, for as far as going ahead, is what do we do about the what do we do about the site visits? You know, Eric told me this afternoon that we have to have three JPs or or the members of the committee go out there. That is uh, that's not a good idea. And the there was some recommendation that we would not go inside. And I wonder how fair it is to not look inside a house when you're valuing it as opposed to just the exterior you know i i think this is these are exceptional times and we need to figure out a way to have our to appraise people appraise them as fairly as we can uh um she she said we could talk to uh our um roger kilburn who is the district advisor see uh replacing oh i forget who we used to have is here uh, for for the longest time lives in jeffersonville um i don't think that'll change the initiative or the require the positive side of this of moving ahead and finishing it finishing it up but there you know i don't know how you can do it you know i for instance are saying you know well i'm on the select board you know i should be going out there but i'm not going to go out there you know that's my health is too important to do that, and I don't think I should shuck that off on some other people. But so we could that. have we could have a hundred appeals on their assessed property when the reappraisals handed out. I mean, I'm I, I'm echoing some of the concerns that Doug has, and yet I, I hear they they really think we need to go forward with it. But I just to go in everybody's home unless they've given us some relief 
the last I know, when when you do a uh, somebody appeals their assessed value, at least three members have to go out and do a site visit, and they have to go through the whole property and view the everything, just like they were doing a uh, initial appraisal. What's the timeline on that? Uh, Rosemary? Probably July or August. Yeah, uh, they're looking where if we didn't institute any delay, uh, when I talked to Nemrick this morning, they're looking at, you know, middle of July as the earliest. When it would get to the BCA? Yeah. Yeah, because uh, when they, actually, go, I think it was middle of August or middle of July when they would start the pre grievance process for their part. Yeah. Okay. I mean, a lot of them will get resolved at that level, but you know, we could have a hundred at our level, the BCA. Yeah. You Surprise don't think this is going to be? Go. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I just said I'm surprised that they're recommending to go forward. It seems counter to all the other recommendations. The, the consensus from everybody we've talked, everybody that I've spoken to on the outside of, of this has, has encouraged us to go forward with reappraisal. Yeah, I mean, if this thing's still going on in August, yeah, we've got bigger problems to worry about. Right? Amen to that. Can everybody hear me? Yes. yes. Sir. And I'm sorry if I step on somebody, but I don't have all the features on my uh, cell phone that I did on my computer. Okay. okay. Thank you, Mike. Yeah. Nice bridge. Nice what? Oh, yeah. It's a beauty. New Hampshire. <laughs> okay. Uh, I mean, we're in what? We're in early. <laughs> what day is it? Early April. Yeah. May, June. That's a uh, boy. If this thing's still hanging on, then uh, we've got a curve that's uh, hopefully right. flattened and disintegrated by August. Fingers crossed. I mean, I know it's still going to be out there until we get a vaccine, but if this goes on like this till August or September, we're in real big trouble. Like somebody already said, and. If that happens, maybe we can get relief at that time. Oh, yeah. Let's, let's hope. I mean, it's amazing what the state can do between the legislature and the governor when they want to do something. If this well, same with the polls in Washington, too. They will be out of session. Yeah. If this goes on till August. Nobody's going to have any money to pay property taxes with. We're not going to have to worry about it. And that's the truth. So should we uh, just give the green light to continue with a reappraisal? Yes. Everyone in agreement? What are your thoughts on that, Doug? I'm not good at, I, I wish I had Dr. Fauci here, you know, <laughs> because I'm not good on predicting this stuff. The We're relying on the legislature to, to save us if there's a problem. Well, they, they saved us with the open meeting law. That's all we can do is rely on them. Well, this, this play, you know, the, the downside on this of not going forward is the um, paying more money probably to our assessor, working out an agreement, seeing, asking them whether or not they, our assessor and the district advisor about how they were going to adjust the, the, the quadrennial appraisal properties that they did earlier, if they were just going to use a number and could they use that number for the fifth year. Um, uh, it, it, it's, um, we're speculating as to what the state of the COVID pandemic will be. I, I don't, I think we ought to talk to uh, Roger and and our and our assessor and say, you know, if we didn't do this, 
how far out would be and what could you do to co compensate for it? I don't think they are looking at the burden on our people or the ex possible exposure of our people. They are looking at, they're a single issue. They're looking at the viability of the tax system, which as we know is, you know, 80% of what we need to do. So, but it's not the only thing we need to do. May I speak, Mr. Chairman? Sure. Go ahead, Mike. This isn't going to be a killing affair if we don't do it, though, right? Just let things go the way they are with the current appraisal and maybe take care of it next year? Well, the only issue is the CLA. We're, we're uh, notching up on that, and that costs our taxpayers in their school taxes, statewide school taxes. Okay. Would one more year... I don't know. I mean, you know, like Doug's saying, it, it's hard to tell what one more year delay would be. Uh, those earliest homes, a quarter of the town was uh, assessed four years ago. Is it going to make a big difference if it was five years ago? I don't know. This whole thing could throw a whole wrench in the works, you know, even for property value property value could actually go down next year. And that's what happened in 2008. We had just done a reappraisal and our CLA went up to like 110% because we were assessed over what people's, uh, the market value was driving. Uh, I mean, that could happen if we did it right now. It's not a bad thing because it reduces the amount you pay in statewide property tax, but I guess. It's an awful mess anyway. From the sounds of it, Doug, is it is there a recommendation because we're so far into it right now, we should just continue? Their recommendation, here's, here's the quote I think that, that goes to the heart of this. Four years of data is already pushing what I would consider current value. And postponing it a year would only give you folks an even more stale set of records. And then she goes on to say, we are all in uncharted territory regarding what impact will be on property value tax rates and other related factors. Delaying another year would certainly lead to greater disparity in these few months. And she said, I don't believe the level of citizen grieving the values would be any more or less than, unfortunately, there will be this year. I think next year would be better, hopefully better able to deal with grievances than we will be this year. Um, I, I think she's focusing on the disparity. I would want to know about, you know, if we're adjusting for four years, what's the difference for they're adjusting for five and what sort of factor, you know, how do they have these things set up? You know, do, can they, can they run a percentage, you know, for, for different things, you know, distinguishing between housing, or residential and commercial and forest land, sugar bush, whatever, how they do that. You know, I would want to know, ask our people that, and then I would want to know if we did this, what would it cost us? As, as, as contracts, you know, another year of assessing. I would guess if we waited until next year, and we use the data that we've got from the, these last four years, our assessed values are going to be much higher than what the market's going to drive. And it will give us a lot more uh, appeals, assessment appeals than, than it would right now, because nobody knows what the market's going to drive yet. Don't Mr. Chair. Go ahead, Mike. Uh, th this is for uh, Doug. So you're, you're basically saying you think they could tweak the numbers next year to uh, make a compensation for the change in market, correct? I'm wondering if they couldn't. I think we should ask them. Well, yeah, me too. Now, why don't we? Don't we have enough time to do that? I assume so. We, we have to ask the, uh, there, I think what they said, there are either 19 or 29 towns that are in a reappraisal, and two of the 29, and I don't know who they are or what their circumstances are, have asked for to, to be relieved of, of their, their obligation, and, and, and it would be granted. You know? Yeah, that sounds good, too, Doug. 
here, the, the last sentence is, or second to the last sentence, this is a decision that should be made in close consultation with your lister, assessor, contractor, and other impacted individuals. So that's what I'm suggesting. So should we, for our regular meeting in two weeks, have our assessors zoom in? Yeah. Yep. And yeah, let's get more information. And ask them to work on it ahead of time and yep. maybe give us some input. I'm, I'm quite certain that they'll they've got all their work done they're pretty pretty tired they're ready to roll yep. this out um and we got to consider that but i think we have to consider the other side of it the human side of it too yeah our our side and the people are the people that are going to go out and the what we've talked about here brian can you reach out to the assessor and ask them if they would attend our next select board meeting absolutely Okay, thanks. Good Involving questions, lists. Doug. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, thank you, Doug, taking the lead on that. Yep. Revolving okay. loan fund. Okay, uh, moving on with the revolving loan fund. Um, we've received a request for relief from payments to our revolving loan fund. Uh, I spoke to Cassie Bell at ACCD uh, and the indication is that there is broad support for this, but there isn't specific guidance. So her advice is that we just do a good job of documenting whatever we do, what our rationale is, our procedures, and how we're handling it. Keep, uh, keep the agency in the loop and uh, we can go ahead. Um, I will say I spoke to John Mandeville, who uh, is our financial advisor for the loan. Uh, John said that for the LEDC revolving loan, uh, they are, have gone to interest only payments uh, for the time being. I don't know how that will work for our uh, our requester. Um, our loan to them is tied up in their mortgage agreement. Uh, so they have some kind of specific needs uh, for that. So you mean if we did uh, interest only, it wouldn't really be helpful for them? I believe it would be helpful for them, but I'm, I guess I'm not 100% guaranteed on that. I was not able to connect with the bank uh, to get confirmation on if that would meet what the bank needs uh, or not. Um, so we can... When are they looking for an answer? Well, uh, we weren't able to do it before the beginning of this month. Uh, so I, I think that this probably can wait for our regular meeting, uh, you know, because I wasn't able to get that, okay. that, that answer from the bank, whether interest only would uh, meet the minimum requirement. So I guess the choice before the board is if you're, interested in just suspending it entirely, we can do that. Uh, mm -hmm. And that would definitely meet the bank's requirements. If you're interested in following John's advice and continuing to collect interest, then uh, I would need a little bit more information. Okay, so what's the board's pleasure? We could suspend it tonight, but if we want to go with the interest only, we may have to wait for two weeks. Yes. Okay. Keep it simple. We've got enough to do. Let's just suspend it. Um, do we have a request from? We do. What? We have a request from uh, uh, a loan recipient to suspend payments to the loan. Uh, For how long? Uh, 90 days. Oh, that's my motion. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Three months of payments. Second. You got a motion and a second. Any more discussion? I take it that next 90 days was actually three months of payments? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Any other discussion? All those in favor of signify saying aye. 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 Those opposed. Okay. We got a paving request for proposals. 
I want to put the attached RFP out and I uh, thought the board should get a chance to look it over. So it's two locations, uh, Plot Road and Overhill Road. Uh, we're going to apply for a paving grant to help pay for Plot Road because that is um, that's going to be pretty expensive. You know, the sub base there is in poor, can, poor shape and uh, we're going to have to, you know, really dig deep uh, and build it back up again, so. What's the board's pleasure? You want to approve, reject, modify? We have the money in the budget and it's committed for this, this particular project. We have some money in the budget for paving. Um, my fear, I, I think we'll be okay on it, even if we were denied the grant. Uh, but we might have to mod if the if the bids come back too high, we might if the bids come back too high and we don't get the grant, we might have to uh, modify the scope of work. The plot road is in bad shape. And it is. Uh, and right now, all uh, grant review is suspended. So we don't know if we're going to get the grant or not. Oil is cheap. Yeah. Yeah. Does that mean the uh, pavement prices will go down? <laughs> it should. Is that uh, Mike that came back on with the iPhone? Hey, Mike. <laughs> you back, Mike? <laughs> okay, uh, I'm assuming that's Mike, so I'm gonna unmute. You're back. So well, I should have taken my phone out of its case because it overheated. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Isn't that the truth, huh? <laughs> I finally got an iPhone. <laughs> Easy, huh? well, we need okay. some. We're, we're here to approve the paving request for proposal. That's, all, that's it's as simple as that. Right. Yeah, I, I'm in favor of that. So was you it so protect? moving? You so moving? Mike had a question first. Sorry, Mike. Mike? Didn't hear you. What was the price per ton? No, it's going for, for bid. RFP. We don't have a bid yet. Okay. We're just putting it out to bid. Right. Okay, good. So moved. Second. A motion. Got a second. Any more discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Uh, last item I got is a solid waste proposal contract. So all this needs now is our signatures? Yep. Or the board can order you to sign it, but uh, at least doing that for the time being would put us on firmer ground with their continued operation. Okay. What's the board's pleasure there? It's a proposal as we sent out, no changes. Yes. So I'm going to be authorized the chair to, to sign the um, contract for the solid waste district. Second. A motion and a second, any more discussion? Where does this leave us if we need to use some of that land for um, Emerald Ash for depositing trees? It would leave us uh, kind of in the same position we've been in, that we own more of the land than they're using. Uh, we would have to negotiate with them at that time about uh, travel through their use portion, but. Okay. Uh, Any other discussion? There still is some of our land back there. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify saying aye. Aye. 
Those opposed? So I'll be in tomorrow to sign the solid waste and the orders. Uh, is there any other items before I would entertain a motion to go into deliberations on the dog hearing? If there's no other items, I would entertain that motion. So I'll move, Mr. Chairman. Uh, you probably don't have it quoted. Do you have it, the exact wording somewhere, uh, Brian? It got cut off on my sheet. So uh, it is pursuant to uh, 20 VSA subsection 3546. Is that your motion, Mike? Yeah. I thought sure it thing. was. Yeah. <laughs> Do we have a second? Second. Motion is second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Before we close, I just want to say thanks to uh, Green Mountain Access Television and, and Michael. Um, you get you've been they got been getting our, our Friday community Zoom meetings up um, on the internet really quick, and and that's been a really nice thing. Um, so thanks for that. Yeah, yeah. kudos. Thank I you. would echo that as well. They've done a great job. Oh, and sorry, one more thing on that. Um, uh, Stuck in Vermont has picked up the little piece on Isaac, and they're going to do a whole segment on it. Apparently, great. Oh, that's great. great. <laughs> Yeah, that was so sweet. Yes. Any other discussion? All those in favor of going into a deliberation, signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Show us at, uh, what time is it here? 822.